So I got a message on my inbox asking me um, how to overcome your ego. And I wanted to kind of see what Steve's thoughts were on this topic about the ego. Yeah, I saw that, that email too. So the guy was questioning, like, if you become very ego, ego driven, then that's a bad thing because then you know, you're, I guess he's worried you could be perceived as arrogant or something like that. Yeah. But I think, you know, ego means different things to different people. For some people, it's like a fear based thing. For some people, it's like their whole personality is the ego and they're in the spiritual circle and want to shed this and let, let go of the whole idea of being a human being. Uh, but in this context, I think it's just about fear. You know, the problem is what it. You know, what the question implies is that you're adding another layer on top of your personality saying that the way I am right now isn't good enough and that people are going to judge me as being ego driven in addition to just being myself and so it's kind of like you're taking the you're taking you know, the idea of being fully yourself in the wrong direction now you're not only worried about you know being who you are you're worried about being judged negatively for being too much of who you are like you know people are just going to judge me for expressing myself and that that's a problem. It's really not a problem. Yeah, yeah a, a big thing I got from being at this conference was um, uh, before I looked to advice for all the speakers, um, but n now that I've met lots of the speakers, I realize they're all kind of human beings. They're all, and, and, and they're all kind of, kind of wacky guys. They all have crazy ideas, but they all hit lots of chords out there when they go out with their crazy ideas that really resonate with lots of people. And that's how they kind of inspire people. But the main kind of less I've gotten is that all the speakers are very good at being themselves, and they kind of accept their their craziness. Yeah, it's very true. And a lot of people, when they get in this field, they expect everyone here to be like demi demigods or something. You know, like we're all perfect beings. And you know, the truth is, some people really, you know, in this field, they deliberately slant their marketing in that direction, trying to paint themselves in the best possible light and you know brand themselves a certain way. I wrote an article a while ago called Branding is Fear-Based BS because I'm, I'm still fighting that well. But the truth is that even if you do a lot of stuff to bring yourself back down to earth, people will still tend to put you on a pedestal because to them, you're just an idea that they haven't met you in person. You know, you represent the ideal self-path that they want to follow for themselves. And so, you know, you become kind of this just amorphous blob of goodness that they're trying to move, move towards. And it's funny, you know, how you mentioned, like, you meet people in this field and you're like, hey, they're actually human. And I had that experience too a while back, you know, meeting some of my mentors in this field and thinking, wow, this person's actually human. You know, behind the scenes, they're drinking, they're partying, they're having fun, you know, they, they play around a lot, they're silly, and you know, they've got all these personality flaws, and of course they're human. You know, we're, there's actually real people behind all this work being done. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not just like coming down from the heavens or something like that. It's real people figuring things out over a long period of time. But one of the benefits they have that makes them sound good a lot of the time is that they have a lot of experience. You know, some people have been doing this work for, uh, you know, easily as long as you've been alive and some of them as long as I've been alive here. You know, you meet people who've been doing this work for like four or five decades. You're like, wow. <laughs> you know, that's, that's where all the refinement comes from is life experience. But then when you talk about where were you when you were 20 years old, you know, their situation was like often really screwed up, messed up. You know, they have multiple like uh, bankruptcies or divorces. You know, I can't tell you how many people I've met in this field who are on their like third or fourth wife, <laughs> and, you know, or husband. It's it's crazy, yeah. But it's just multiple, you know, multiple people coming together, doing their best work, making contribution. Thank you. It's interesting to me how conversations like this can be very rare in this day to day life. Not for me. Yeah. So <laughs> this happens like all the all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's normal. I know. So, so that's awesome. Yeah, I'm just starting to have conversations like this. I, I've been thinking about things like this, but I'm not. I've had a hard time articulating these ideas. And now I'm just starting to have conversations with you about this and my friends and it's, it, it, it's awesome. It's like, the more I think about it, the more true it becomes because I'm talking about it more. Yeah, so if you want to make have more of it, just tell your reality, create more of this. Yeah, so here I am with my YouTube video, <laughs> while reality, create more of this. <laughs> and I'll, Go for it, yeah. That's basically what I did. I said, I want to have more stimulating conversations about deep topics, about the nature of reality, you know. So bring it. Yeah. And then it shows up. That's awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. And, and you know, over time you can make that your daily reality. You can have these kind of conversations whenever you want. Is there anything in your reality of right now that you want to show up or that you've wanted to show up for the last one to five years that hasn't showed up? Yeah, I would say, you know, one is one is what we talked about the mastermind, which is why we couldn't get our staff from our business. Uh -huh. And it's kinda of interesting because I've had sort of a love hate relationship with that idea. And on the one hand I love the lifestyle I have right now. And don't want to mess that up. Yeah. And a lot of people here are in that same, same kind of uh, you know, conflicted state right now, where we love the lifestyles we have, and it's great. 
but we also see the potential to take our work to the next level and create even more ripples. And we can't do that on our own while working in really small, you know, small teams and stuff. So the, the question is like getting into alignment with that, with that reality, and not creating the conflict. And I think one of the reasons we do that is because we're not done being where we are yet. Like we're still kind of enjoying this lifestyle as an independent person, and we feel the calling to that next level. But we're, we're temporarily saying no to that, or, or at least not yet. You know, like, let me kind of experience and enjoy this level where I am right now. And I had a similar experience as my income would go up over time. I'd actually tell reality, pause my income at this level. Like, I don't want to go beyond that. I don't want to make more money because I want to see what this level's like. I want to experience it while I'm here. I want to enjoy it. You know, it's like I, I had an experience of you know, having my income go up by like a factor of 10 in, in a year. And I'm like, wait a minute, I don't need to go to a factor of 100. Let's just be at this level and feel what that's like and enjoy it. And enjoy that sense of abundance. And then when I feel bored with it or listless or want to be challenged more, then I can go do something beyond that. But then I, you know, after a while, I kind of lost interest in just going down that path. Like other goals, you know, open up and other avenues of exploration and exploring relationships just became that much more meaningful. So we have the ability to pause that if we want to. And I think that's what's been happening with the, the idea of staffing. Me and a lot of other speakers here are saying, like, Let, let's pause and let's, let's just love where we are right now for a little bit. And then we're ready to take it to the next level we'll do that. You could narrow down your philosophy into the most simplest, shortest, concise language. 80 seconds. 8 zero. You can see 80 seconds left. So what's your shortest, most concise philosophy on life? I'd say that you create your own reality. And make it a good one. You know, create the reality you want to. That's essentially it, is that we create our reality. Like consciousness, there's just one consciousness. You look around and measure how many consciousnesses you perceive, there's just one. Yeah. And that's you. And that's the creator of this of this life, this experience, this reality. And so you can choose <laughs> to mold that experience how you like. And you're already doing that, whether you're aware of it or not. Yeah. Thanks very much, Tuan. Fascinating stuff. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you, Steve. Yeah. Fred's behind the camera. I've been following. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of times I would just wake up in the morning and I was really you know, freaked out that I actually exist. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> That's, it's kind of like life is a psychedelic trip.